Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 2 of my bully playthrough. If you haven't watched the first episode yet, be sure to check it out. I'll make a playlist out of it soon. Now, let's begin. Be sure to smash like and smash comment if you want more, alright? Alright. The time was 900. The alarm in my dorm was blaring. The heinous are wrong series, my bad. It was time to start a new day fresh, but the events of yesterday were still on my mind. Eunice, my sweet Eunice, left a gaping hole the size of one of her bellies, which anatomically speaking would have killed me in both this and the afterlife. But I still miss her dearly. I make my way over to the Bullworth Lounge and I found both Gary and Petey who tell me, fret no more, for it is now time to go on a little adventure. Gary noted I obtained the slingshot. He asks me how I got it and why there was an eyeball dangling from the sling, but I decide not to answer that question. He says, come, come quickly to the football field. He wants to teach me something, but then I saw a horrible event unfold before me. From the corner of my eye, I see a young man dropping a banana peel on the ground. And what happened next was just the most tragic set of events I've ever seen in my life. Gary slips and falls to the earth. He gets extremely upset and decides to beat up the banana peel terrorist and then an all-out war breaks out near the football field. Man, this day already starts out amazing. Eventually, we make it to the football field. I told Gary all about my dream about becoming an astronaut to leave this planet. And he said, well, first, you need to learn about velocity, inertia, and gravity. And what better way to learn that by climbing up in a tree and shoot jocks with a slingshot? My years of experience with Fortnite really pay off and I managed to clap every single one of these fools. I already have learned a lot, but then... I get a text message. Eunice is near the statue on the school campus, and this was my time to impress her. So I stole this basketball of this guy and decide to show her my sweet moves. I try everything, sweet Michael Jordan dribbles, just caressing the ball while I look her in the eye, and of course, a sweet dunk that ended up in me destroying school property. I am now a hooligan, but she says nothing and once again totally blanks me. My heart, it shattered as I see the love of my life walk away into the morning dew. I head over to the library to educate my sorrow away, but I am greeted by this character named Algy. He seems to have a big problem with going to the bathroom, and with that I mean he keeps getting beat up whenever he shows his face. So I say, say no more, my bulky boy. I shall aid thee. And just as I expected, a million dubious bastards throw themselves at poor Algy, but I take care of it. Stand back! I yell. He doesn't listen, so I decide to pop him once with the slingshot, and just like that. The mission was now on ultra hardcore mode. One tiny breeze and Algy would perish on the school campus, but I wasn't gonna let this happen. So I destroyed wave after wave after wave after wave of juvenile delinquents all wanting a piece of Algy pie, but no, not today. Eventually we made it to the bathrooms quickly, quickly. I hold them off, I yelled, but then Eunice. Big, ripe, fertile Eunice has been taken inside the bathroom stall by this 13-year-old. My universe collapsed. My soul was now the center of a black hole. I beat up everything and everyone and lastly, I decided to pressure wash the inside of Angie's butthole with a firecracker that I made yesterday. Everything after that just became one massive blur and all I remember is waking up in my own bed the following day. P.T. and Gary have heard all about what happened and decided to take me under their wing again. They tell me about this ancient warlock that lives on school campus, one that bestows magical chance upon you and is able to grant you three wishes. So of course I want to meet him. One wish would be to forget Eunice. The other that I would become an astronaut, and the last wish I don't really need. You could say that I could wish for world peace or something, but nah. That is not in my benefit since I will be leaving this planet anyway, so screw that final wish. I meet the magical wizard and it turns out to be a drunk hobo. Hey, I hear you. Oh, shit. 
But he does offer me lessons in the art of the uppercut. And all I need to find is a radio transistor. Now where on God's green earth would I find a goddamn radio transistor on a school campus? I mean, I don't see any educational use for them whatsoever. And ah, I found it. It was on top of the school's auto shop and behind the junkyard. Wait, why does this school have an auto shop and a junkyard? Where am I? Anyway, I return to the homeless magical wizard hobo and wait, am I, am I still sleeping? Everything has become one massive blur, but I learned the uppercut from this man and I wake up with my face inside frog's guts in biology class. I decide just to continue on dissecting the frog as well, I, I don't know what else to do right now. And I pass the class easy peasy and I think to myself, wait. What if this is still a dream? Oh, 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 to the girls' dorms. I walk into an interesting scene. I kind of want them to make out, but I also don't want whatever she has on her mouth to spread. So I am left with a confused erection. Regardless, one of the girls storms off of the other girl's homework. The girl walks up to me and says, Please, help me. Please, get my notes back. I will pay you. No problem, I yell. I rush outside to complete the objective. I open the door to go outside and just like that, I walk into the goddamn music class. What is even going on at this point? I am just going with the flow and slam the living shit out of this cowbell. Am I on drugs? I ace the test and get back to the task at hand. I sneak into the gym where the thief has put away the stolen documents in her locker. I use the valuable lessons Gary has taught me. I unlock the locker and retrieve the documents and also, oh, I plant a juicy stank bomb. Oh, it's now time to hide. But just like in real life, whenever I play hide and seek, I need to pee really bad. So I go for a ooh, quick pee stop. The bomb goes off in her face and she ends up puking all over the floor. Ah! I go for one more quick pee and now it is time to give back the girl's homework. I hand over the homework. Her hand touches mine. We look each other in the eye. My eyes drift to the sore in the corner of her mouth, but I decide, whoa, YOLO. It's all a dream anyway. Well... I guess it's time to go back to my dorm and sleep or something. I don't know, I got literally nothing else to do in my dream. And legit question, has this ever happened to anyone? Has everyone ever gotten bored in a dream and just decides to go to sleep? That must be crazy. But the next morning when I wake up and walk out of the door, the first thing that happens is a student running up to me and laughing at the huge sore in the corner of my mouth. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for the love on the YouTube channel and for the new Bully series. And now it is time for a massive shout out to all the members. Thank you all, thank you all. If you want to become a member and watch videos early and all that jazz, be sure to press that damn join button down below. It really helps me out greatly and well, I will see you guys in my next video, okay? Okay. <laughs>